Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jan Stieverman. I'm a professor of the history of Christianity in the US here at the University of Heidelberg. I'm also a member of the Research Center for Interdisciplinary and International Theology, where I'm now representing American religion as a new section. It is my pleasure to open the last panel in this wonderful conference, and I would like to use this occasion to briefly look back to another very successful long-term cooperation that the Templeton Foundation had with the Research Center, the uh, Templeton Award for Theological Promise, an award that in many ways has also been connected to the agenda of this conference. I want to spend a few moments on, if you like, a, a taking of stocks of the general achievements of this award, and more specifically, how it served as a tool to further the science and religion debate. And I'm doing this also as a way to set the stage for three of the awards winner, award winners who are here today to talk about specific current projects related to the overarching theme of this conference, Jonathan Edelman, Daniel Montenaro, and Eva Harasta. In concluding, I then want to spend another very short moment to talk about the future, not only about the future of the award, but also about some possible future ways to move forward the science and religion dialogue through continuing the fruitful partnerships between the center and the foundation. So as mentioned several times during the open ceremony, between 2007 and 2011, the John Templeton Foundation sponsored the Templeton Award for Theological Promise, housed by the Research Center under the directorship of Michael Welker. What many of you might not know is just how successful the award has been as a means for promoting the academic work and career of young scholars from around the globe. And the people standing here and sitting at this table are all walking illustrations of that. The idea behind this program was to give an award not to established, well-known figures, as many other programs do, but to young scholars in recognition for the merits of their first books, uh, usually their dissertations. Another striking feature of the Templeton Award was its programmatically international and interdenominational and interfaith orientation. Award winners and also evaluators uh, came from all five different continents, from over 20 different countries, and they represented not only a broad variety of Christian um, faith traditions, but also um, other world religions, including Judaism, uh, Hinduism, and Islam. Um, so the effort of the foundation to internationalize was really beautifully reflected in this particular program. From my viewpoint, as one of the 2009 winners, there were three main reasons for the great success of the award as a means to promote scholarly careers at an early stage. The first, the ingenuity of the framework format as devised by Professor Welker. Secondly, the sheer amount of money that was put into it. <laughs> and third, the flexibility allowed in spending it. Uh, the programmatic idea behind the format of the award that was that young scholars do need as much recognition and visibility, if you like, symbolic capital as they can get, and the award with its quickly growing prestige certainly gave them that. But young scholars equally need a very real non-symbolic kind of capital, and they need to network, especially for a prize given to the up and coming rather than to the established. Uh, the Templeton Award was very generously endowed, endowed uh, in addition to a $10,000 cash prize, the 12 annual recipients of the award were also eligible for an additional $10,000 travel stipend to be used for public lectures at universities and colleges over the course of two years. And I can say for young academics with limited opportunities for research funding and international collegiality, the award thus offered access to considerable resources that could be freely used for research and for travel. All of this certainly made a very significant and positive difference in the careers of many. I know of a good number of prize winners both from Europe and America personally, who were able to take the next step in their career because of the prestige 
and the resources connected to the award. But I can also use myself here as an illustrative example. For me, the award led to many new academic contacts, important invitations uh, in, the, in the United States, and ultimately also opened um, a door to finding my new position here in Heidelberg, a dual appointment with the Department of Theology and the Interdisciplinary Heidelberg Center for American Studies. And I'm sure that the person sitting here at the table will be able to give you other striking examples of just how successful the award was as a career promoting tool. Now, as I suggested earlier, the award was also intended as a tool to further the science and religion debate. In my view, it served that function very well. In an age where public debates were, are often characterized by false polarizations between religion and rationality, belief and scientific inquiry, the award gave recognition to work studying God and spirituality broadly conceived from the perspective of various scientific dif disciplines, um, if by the science we do not just reductively understand the natural sciences only. Despite its epithet for theological promise, the award was not reserved for scholars with a background in the classical branches of academic theology. Um, there was the full range of uh, the spectrum of religious studies that was represented by award winners but also philosophy, philosophy of religion from various faith traditions, economics, sociology, and various works focused on different areas of cultural and literary history. My own book, for instance, uh, was a study of the co-evolution of theology, aesthetics, and scientific thought in the works of Ralph Waldo Emerson, the American uh, great thinker, to just give you a sense of the breadth that was encouraged uh, through the uh, award. Yet among each cohort of prize-winning books, we also find studies addressing questions relating specifically to the complex relationship between the natural sciences and theology, so also uh, science and religion in a more narrow sense. Let me just give you three quick examples here to indicate the breadth. In 2007, Graham Wood from Australia received the award for his book, The Fine-Tuning of the Universe, so ad addressing the anthropic principle. 2009, there was a book by Willis Jenkins from Yale, Ecologies of Grace, bringing together environmental studies and theology. And in 2011, we had Jonathan Edelman here who received the prize for When Two Worlds Meet, a dialogue between the Bhagavad Purana and contemporary biological theory, so the Hinduistic tradition and the natural sciences. And he will tell you a little bit more about his research in a moment. Now, um, as was mentioned um, also during the awards at the opening ceremony, um, given these great achievements of the award, we are all overjoyed to learn that it will be carried on into the future by a new sponsor after the funding by the Templeton Foundation expired in 2012 when the maximum time limit was reached that the regulations prescribe. From next year onward, then the Manfred Lautenschläger Foundation will continue the program basically in its original uh, format. And I think this is the moment where we, I want to personally express on behalf of all the award winners, our thanks to the Templeton Foundation with deep sense of gratitude. You really made a difference in our lives and also express uh, our joy that this program is going to be continued by the Lautenschläger Foundation. Now, we here at Heidelberg, of course, very much hope that this conference will not mark the final culmination, however glorious, in the long-standing and very productive partnership between our university and the Templeton Foundation. As far as the Foundation's interest in furthering the science and theology dialogue is concerned, I certainly see much potential here at Heidelberg as a comprehensive research university for new and much needed projects. I've already heard several possibilities discussed in the hallways and uh, over coffee. From my humble perspective as a student of American religious history, I believe that in addition to contributing to the dialogue between the natural sciences and religion, it would be an important task for the foundation to support research formats, formats that explore the complex history of science and the religion in American culture. Um, 
Of course, much important work has been done in this area over recent decades. I'm thinking here of people like Edward Larson or Mark Knoll. But so much remains to be done, and especially it remains to be done from a transatlantic perspective that takes into view the reciprocities, but also the crucial differences between the American and the European developments. For one thing, such formats could help us understand why there came to be such an acrimonious science and religion debate in the US specifically, and why this conflict persists despite the fact that so much progress has been made in showing that on the one, on the level of abstraction, that in the lecturing hall, if you like, there needs to be no, there really is no principle or necessary conflict between physics, evolutionary biology, and religious faith. Why then does the uh, debate, the warfare, confrontational kind of attitude persist in American culture? How did the US end up in the present culture wars in which substantial groups of the population on both ends of the spectrum believe that science and religion are fundamentally irreconcilable, regardless of how much agreement we scholars uh, might reach at conferences such as this. Um, I do think that the science and religion di dialogue will move forward in the larger public discourse in the US only if we get a better grasp of um, where all the cultural resistance is coming from, historically speaking. And we also need to better understand how the persisting um, um, science and religion debate is tied into larger conflicts over cultural authority in the US, in which both very different concepts of religion or religions, I should say, and sciences um, are invoked for purposes of legitimization. Um, secondly, fresh studies in the history of the relationship of science and religion in the US would also raise the awareness that over the past four centuries, the kind of all-out confrontational attitudes that we see today in many quarters were rare exceptions. And instead, we usually find much more complex constellations. In fact, in uh, talking about Sir John Templeton's spiritual biography, Dr. Post mentioned two essential traditions in American cultural and religious history that both provide paradigms, if very different ones, um, of a constructive integration of religious belief and scientific inquiry. The Edwardsian, or the Reformed Puritan tradition, and the Emersonian, or Transcendentalist tradition. Having done considerable work on both of these traditions, I can say that each in their own way still provide great resources waiting to be mined for the science and religion dialogue today. Both traditions have a lot to offer when thinking about ways to bridge the Cartesian um, dualism. Both offer different approaches to dealing with the problem of how to reconcile determinism and human freedom. Um, also, especially the transcendentalist tradition is uh, very interesting in um, how evolution can also be applied to uh, the history of religion itself and the history of theology itself. They were the first to do this in, in, in American uh, thought. But in concluding, I also want to say that in the current situation, it is especially important, I think, to make conservative Christians in the US more aware of how the great representatives of what they regard as their very own tradition, people like Jonathan Edwards or Cotton Mather, did not regard the rising natural sciences as enemy, as an enemy, but as a partner. The historical founding fathers of conservative Protestantism in the US displayed an open-mindedness that is often lacking today, and we need to create an awareness for that, I think, through more historical research. And I think it would also be a good time for the Templeton Foundation to maybe sort of start to historicize their own research ag agenda. What brought Sir John Templeton to uh, this kind of interest and research agenda that we talked about, the confluence of these two great traditions, Edwardsian and Emersonian. And I think that the Heidelberg University and the center with its strong expertise in history of theology, but also American studies uh, could be an interesting partner for that. It's just something to think about. Anyway, again, thank you very much. From my perspective, the award was certainly uh, 
enormously beneficial to me. And with this, I uh, hand over to my colleagues here.